have any questions about the midterm, the, the review, I'm sorry, that you all wanted to ask me about, you can either speak up and just tell me, or you can put it in the chat. It's really up to you guys. I'm not, I don't make any rules on how you all talk to me. You can talk to me either way, whichever way is easier. Um, if you just give me a few moments, I need to find the exact question it was. Definitely. So, guys, take your time. If there's any questions that you know that you were struggling with and you want me to go over, take your time, look through your re review, or if you wrote it down or whatever, let me know, and, um, and I'll definitely do that. Uh, so I did have a question for number 53 on the review. Okay. I got a little mixed up on those. Okay. Let me pull that one up. So I'm going to scroll down here to number 53. Let's see. Here we go. Yes, definitely. Okay. So, so guys, here's number 53, and it says, solve for X. Uh, be careful to examine your work to see if, if the equation may have no solution or an infinite number of solutions. Okay, so what I'm going to do, guys, is I'm just going to okay, here we go. I'm going to work out the problem. I'm going to write it over here on the side where I have a little bit of room. Negative six, see, negative six plus six, and then it was x minus one equals fifteen x plus four minus nine x. Fifteen x plus four minus nine x. Okay, so remember what we're trying to do here. We're, we're supposed to solve for x, which means we wanna get the letter x all by itself. Okay, so guys, the first thing that I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna work on the left side of the equation first. So I'm gonna work on this side. I'm gonna go ahead and distribute that, that six. So I'm gonna leave this negative six alone. Okay, so 6 times x will give me a 6x, and then 6 times negative 1 will give me a negative 6. Okay. And then here, we can go ahead and combine both of these together. So remember, negative 6 means I owe you $6. Another negative 6 means I borrowed another 6, so now I'm going to owe you 12. So I'm going to have 6x minus 12 equals... Okay, so now on the right side of the equation, I'm gonna worry about combining these. So 15x minus 9x is 6x plus four. Okay, so now that we have our equation written out, I'll tell you what, I'll write it like this so that it's a little bit more even Steven. Okay, so now at this stage, we need to decide, okay, what, what am I gonna, what pieces am I gonna move over? So if I decide I'm going to work with my x's, a lot of times I would tell you all in the videos, I can move the smaller x to the bigger x, but if you notice, they're both 6x's, right? So if I subtract 6x here and I subtract 6x here, then these 6x's are going to cancel out. I'm going to drop down this negative 12 equals these uh, 6x's are going to cancel out. I'm going to drop down that positive 4. So I end up with something like this, negative 12 equals four. So since I know that negative 12 is not equal to four, then what we're gonna say here, y'all, is that there is no solution, okay? So let me kind of zoom out so you can see that, but it's gonna be a no solution type problem. And so uh, I wanna do 54 because 54 is almost identical to 53. If you notice that the directions say the same thing, it says, uh, be careful to examine your work to see if the equation may have no solution or an infinite number of solutions. I'm hoping that 54 gives us an infinite so that we can at least kind of understand what the difference is between the two, okay? Uh, but uh, Serena, for 53, did, I, did we make sense on how we came up with the answer? Yes, yes, thank you so much. Okay, sure, sure. So guys, look, let me do number 54. So we have 9x plus 4, and then minus 6 equals 32. 
uh, minus 2x minus 2 plus 11x. Okay. All right, so I'm going to do this one the same way we did the other. I'm going to put my line right through here, and I'm going to work on the left side first. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply my 9x out. So that's going to give me 9x plus 9 times 4 is 36 minus, oops, minus 6. Okay. And then I'm going to go ahead and combine my positive 36 minus 6 is a positive 30. Okay, so now on the right side, <clears throat> if you notice here, I have a positive 32 and I have a minus 2. So 32 minus 2 is 30, and then a minus 2x and a plus 11x is going to give me a plus 9x. So I'm just going to write it like this, 9x plus 30. Now, just like we did before, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my 9x on both sides. So those will cancel. I'm going to drop down this 30, put my equals. These are going to cancel, and I'm going to drop down this 30. Now, I want you to notice the difference in problem number 53 and problem number 54. When we did 54, we came up with something like this. Negative 12 is equal to 4. But I know that that's not true. So if it's not true, that's why we ended up with no solution. On 54, we came up with something like 30 is equal to 30. Well, that is true. So if all my x's cancel out and I get something that does make sense, like 30 equals 30, then we can say we have infinitely many solutions. So there's two case scenarios here, y'all. If all my x's cancel out, like they did in both 53 and in 54. But we get something that doesn't make any sense, like negative 12 equals 4 or 7 equals 8 or something like that. Then we're going to say it's no solution. But if all the x's cancel out and we get something that does make sense, like 30 equals 30 or negative 5 equals negative 5 or 0 equals 0, then we're going to say we have an infinite number of solutions or infinite solutions. So excellent question. I'm glad you asked that because I think those are two really important questions. And like I said, guys, this, this whole part of like from chapter two on, this is building the foundation of the algebra. So like next semester, if you end up taking like a college algebra course, or if you end up taking the business algebra course, we're gonna have to know how to solve equations. And, and so this is kind of providing that foundation. So good question. Uh, any other questions anybody might have out of the review or anything in particular that you want me to go over? I'm more than happy to, guys, okay? So there's no rules here. Ask me any question, and I'll, and I'll be happy to answer it for you. Anybody got any questions? Um, just to to double check, I got just a little confused. So, what's the difference between on A where it says x equals blank versus the in, infinite, whatever? Okay. Um, so yeah. So, so yeah. Good question. So, like for these two problems here, uh, and I'm trying to see if there's another one kind of like that. Now, I guess not. Okay. So the idea here behind that choice for choice A was if you, like I said, in both these problems, the X is canceled out, right? But I'm just going to kind of make this up for, uh, let me see if I can find something. Here we go. So like, uh, I'm going to do like 40, number 48, okay? So, and I'll, and I'll come back and I'll explain what that choice A part means. So if I was doing something like 48, um, I'll just write it over here and then I'll work it out. 4 plus X equals... 5 and then 4x minus 1 minus 20. And again, my goal would be the same, approaching this the same way. So I would go ahead and distribute that 5, and that would give me 20 plus 5x equals, let's see, that's a 20x minus 5. And then I have a minus 20. Remember, because I'm multiplying the 5 to both pieces. And so here, I'm going to leave this as 20 plus 5x 
over here, these, uh, let's see, we have 20x, and then minus 5 and minus 20 would be a minus 25. Okay? And now, I'm going to ask myself, okay, how am I going to, how am I going to do this problem? I usually like to move my smaller x's to my bigger x's. So between the 5 and the 20, the 5 is smaller. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 5x on both sides. That's going to leave me with 20 equals, let's see, 20 minus 15x is, a, or sorry, 20 minus 5x is a 15x minus 25. So now, since I'm trying to get the x by itself, I'm going to go ahead and add 25 to both pieces. And that's going to leave me with 45 equals 15x. So when we divide both sides by 15, we're going to get x is equal to 3, right? So here I would just put x is equal to 3. The idea in number 53 and 54 was if we would have come up with an answer like the way we did here, then that's what we would have entered in for choice A. We would have just put x equals and then whatever number we got, right? So like the way we did on that problem, the way we got 3, we would have put three uh, under our choice A. But that's really the only difference it is. Right? That's, that's pretty much what they were asking you for there. Like if you came up with an answer, well, what is it? And if you didn't come up with an answer because it was either no solution or you got one of those infinitely many solutions, then you would just select that part. Gotcha. Okay, thank you for clearing that up for me. Of course, of course. Good questions. Right. Any any questions all at all, guys? You guys feeling are you guys feeling pretty good about tomorrow? Remember, it's 27 questions that came directly out of these 60. Okay. So, like I said, the only thing that's going to change are the numbers, but then how you solve the problem will be identical. Okay. And then, um, so if, if you guys are still kind of like thinking about a problem, maybe to ask me, I'm going to. I'm going to give you some time to kind of look through your review, and then I'm going to show you um, how we're going to set up for, or how we're going to do our test for tomorrow. And so as I'm giving you some time to look over your stuff, let's see. And then uh, let me see. Give me one quick second, y'all. Mm Okay, so I'm going to show you guys something so that tomorrow, let's see, here we go. Okay, so uh, let me stop sharing this piece here, and I am going to share one more screen with you guys real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, so guys, tomorrow when you guys, let's see, yes, tomorrow when you sign into to Blackboard, first thing I want you to notice right here, 
it says content isn't available. The reason it's not available right now is because this is going to be for tomorrow, but the link is already here. So it says Math 100, uh, V11 midterm exam, session one, uh, Wednesday, 4.14, 10 a.m., right? And then the second one is the 6.30. So tomorrow, whether you're signing in at 10 a.m. or whether you're signing in at 6.30, tomorrow what you guys are going to do is you're going to click on whichever one of those links that you're, gonna, that you're taking to your test, right? So um, I think I'm just going to check one thing for us. Let's see. Okay, so everybody, I think who's here, and I think Mariela, I think I still need you to sign up for the for the exam itself, and I'll show you how you can do that. But both uh, Samantha and Serena, I know you guys are set up for the 6:30 time slot, so you'll just click right here, okay, so that you can see that. And uh, let's see. Uh, give me one quick second. Let me exit out of this part. So let me stop sharing the screen with you guys, and let's see. Preview. Here we go. And let me share the screen one more time. Excuse me. Okay, so for our announcements, let's see, here we go. Uh, so let's see. So, Maniel, I know you still need to sign up for the test. So, if you click on this right here, uh, there is the spreadsheet right here, and if you click on that, it'll open up a spreadsheet, and then you can just put your name either at the 10 a.m. slot or the 6.30 p.m. slot, and you're just going to put your name on there, okay? And then you'll click one of those links tomorrow, dep deciding on or depending on which one you all decide to do, okay? Guys, the other thing I do want to point out, I did include the uh, multiplication table in case anybody wants to use it. So if you click these three dots right here, There'll be a, I think it says download the original file, and you'll have the multiplication table uh, at your at your resource if you need to use it. Okay, so definitely you can use any calculator, but some people, like I said, when we did the uh, the common denominator bit, the multiplication table I thought was a good way of doing it, and it might be a little easier for some of you all. Okay, so let me get out of this part here, and let me come back to the review, and did anybody have any other questions out of the review that you wanted to ask me about? If you don't, that's fine. If you do, feel free to ask. Let's see. Question number 40, definitely. So let's take a look at number 40. Let me scroll back up here to the top. And yes, let's do number 40 here. Okay. So in looking at number 40, y'all, it says negative 72 equals negative 63 with a T. And remember what we're trying to do. We're trying to solve for T, right? And I want you to notice it does tell me to simplify my answers. So remember, my first step is going to be to divide both sides by a negative 63. So these here are going to cancel out. Here's my T. The first thing I notice is that a negative divided by negative is a positive, right? So I have 72 over 63. Now, since it is asking me to simplify, guys, I'm going to pull up my multiplication table, and it's going to be on one of these. Here we go. Okay, so remember the numbers that we had were 72 and 63. So this is the one, this one here is just a 15 by 15. The one that I put on your, uh, in the last announcement was a 20 by 20, so it's even bigger. But the one thing I want to do here is I want to look for those two numbers, 72 and 63, and I want to see if I see them anywhere, in, either in the same row or in the same column. So if you look right here, they're in the nines, right? Or you can look right here, and it's in the nines. So that means I can divide both 73 and 62 by 9. So 9 goes into 63 seven times, and 9 goes into 72 eight times, right? So now when I come back to my problem, oops, when I come back to my problem, here we go, and we said we could divide both these values by 9, we said that 9 went into 72 eight times, and 9 went into 63 seven times. So my answer here would just be 8 over 7. And so uh, 
I'm glad that you asked this question here. Um, uh, Serena, I'm glad you asked this one here because, and, I'll, and Samantha, I'll get to number 25 right now, because this problem here shows how important or how easy it is for me to use my multiplication table and how I can reduce my fraction just by finding those same two numbers, right? So if I find those two numbers, boom, we can reduce them. We got it done. And, and it, was, it was simple to do because those values, I can find them on my chart, right? And so again, guys, when I, on, the, on the announcement where I put that 20 by 20, that's going to be an even bigger table. So if your numbers are bigger, you're going to have a better chance of finding those answers, okay? Excellent question. Um, let's do number 25 because Samantha's asking for that one. So let me scroll down. Let me scroll back up here. And here's number 25. Excellent. So guys, number 25 is telling us to multiply and use the descriptive property. So we have negative nine and then parentheses, nine X minus eight Y plus one. Now remember, I'm gonna distribute this negative nine to each of those pieces, okay? So negative nine times a positive nine is a negative 81 with an X, right? Uh, let's see, a negative 9 times a negative 8 is a positive 72 with a Y. And then a negative 9 with a positive 1 is just a minus 9. Now, I can't combine any of those terms because one's an X, one's a Y, and one is just a constant term. So that would just be my answer right there. Excellent question. Good, good, good. Uh, sir, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Um, why is it negative nine and not negative eight on the on the negative nine part? Good, good, good. Excellent question. So, guys, remember what we're doing here? We're multiplying, right? So, because we're multiplying, so first thing is I know that a negative times a positive is going to give me a negative, right? And then since I'm multiplying, nine times one is just nine, right? I'm not adding the numbers together, but we're actually multiplying. If I was adding, definitely would be a negative eight. Good question. Let's see. I think I heard something else in the chat. Okay, definitely. Thank, you're welcome, Samantha. I'm happy to answer your questions. Okay, thank you so much. I forgot we we're multiplying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're good. We're good. Any other questions you all might have out of anything, guys? There were no rules. I'm just here to I'm just here to help. Number 60, definitely. Take a look at number 60, of course. So let me scroll down. And let's see, number 60, here we go, yes. Okay, so number 60 says, the top speed of a cheetah is double the top running speed of a jackal. Uh, the top running speed of an elk is nine miles an hour faster than that of a jackal. If each of these three animals could run at top speed for an hour, uh, which, of course, is not, is not possible. They could run a combined distance of 165 miles. What's the top running speed of each of these three animals? Okay, so we have three animals. We have the jackal, the cheetah, and the elk. Okay, so we have the cheetah. Oops. Let's do it this way. When I'm reading my problem, y'all, we're talking about the speed of the cheetah, but we compare his, the cheetah's speed to that of the jackal. And then we talk about the elk speed, but we also compare it to the jackal. Since I don't know anything about the jackal speed, we're going to say the jackal speed is going to be our x, because we don't know anything about it. Now, since we're talking about, excuse me, since we're talking about the cheetah now, and we said the cheetah is double that. So whatever this number is, we're going to double it. That means we're going to multiply it by 2. Okay. And then we have the elk's speed. And it says that the elk is 9 miles an hour faster than that of the jackal. So whatever the jackal is, the elk is going to run that plus another 9. Okay. All right. So now we have their speeds, and they say they're going to run for an hour. So they're going to run for an hour. They're going to run a total distance of 165 miles. So that means that the jackal speed 
plus the cheetah speed plus the elk's speed is going to give us a total of 165. Okay. So one thing I want to point out, y'all, this particular problem had three different pieces, the cheetah, the jackal, and the elk. So if it has three different pieces, I want to make sure that my letter X appears three times, okay? And if you notice here, we have the letter X appearing three times. So now all we're going to do is we're going to start combining those Xs. So X plus 2X is 3X, plus another one is 4X, plus 9 equals 165. I'm trying to solve for X, so I'm going to get rid of my 9. And I'm just going to use my calculator here, guys. I'm going to take my calculator real quick, and I'm going to say, what is 165 minus 9? And that is 156. Oops. 156. And then we're going to divide both sides by 4. So again, I'm going to take my calculator, and I'm just going to say, what's 156 divided by 4? And I'm coming up with 39. Okay. All right. So now that we came up with that number, we need to figure out what does that number mean? So when I come back to my original problem, remember X was the jackal speed. So the jackal speed was 39. Now, so I'm gonna put right here, 39 miles an hour. And the next thing is, well, what's the cheetah speed? Well, it's that amount times two. So two times 39 is gonna give me 78. So this number here is 78 miles an hour. And then what about the elk speed? Well, the elk speed is 39 plus another 9, and that's going to give me 48. And so there are my, they're each of my three speeds, right? So again, one thing I really want to emphasize, if, it, if my problem has three different components, then I should see the letter X three times in my particular problem, okay? Good, good, good. Excellent questions. Any other questions anybody might have out of anything? Number 55, definitely. Let's take a look at number 55. So let me scroll back over here. Okay, 55 says a number is tripled and then increased by 5. The result is 95. What's the original number? Okay, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do, guys. I'm going to clean up some of this mess here so that we have some room. Okay. All right. Okay, so it's asking me what's the original number. So we're going to let X be the original number. Okay, so it says a number is tripled. So remember, if we're going to triple a number, that means we're going to multiply it by 3. And then we're going to increase it by 5. So we're going to add 5 to that and then the result, which is equals, is going to give us 95. So this is a great question. I'm glad you asked it. Guys, the hardest part in doing these problems, I think, is going from that part right there that I highlighted to our equation. How do I go from the words to the math, okay? So remember, triple means we're going to multiply by 3. Increased means we're going to be adding, right? Okay, so now, uh, if I'm trying to solve for x, remember the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of my 5 by subtracting it. And that's going to give us a 3x is equal to 90. And then I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by the number 3. And I'm going to come up with x is equal to 30. So the number is 30. Very good question. Perfect. These are good questions, y'all. Any other ones anybody might have? I have 
have a question. Ask me. It's, it's on number five. I'm sure it's super simple, but for it's some reason five. I cannot remember no, 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 how to no. figure it out. Of course, this is why we're here. To answer any question, whether it seems easy or it seems hard, the idea is let's make sure we, we can understand it. This is a perfect question. I'm glad you asked it. This is a question when, for guys, I want to show you, remember, that we can use our multiplication table in a problem like this. So it says combine, make sure to simplify your answer whenever possible, right? So look what we're trying to do here. We're going to add these two fractions. So anytime we're going to add two fractions, we have to make sure that the denominators are the same. I need to get those two numbers to be the same. I have to have the same number on the bottom. So I want you to notice the two numbers we have. We have 10 and 7. So guys, I'm going to come back to my multiplication table. Let me see if I can get it. Where is it? Maybe up here. Maybe one more. Maybe down here. There we go. I was going to find it at some point. Okay. So the two denominators that we had were 10 and 7, right? Okay. So let me get my eraser here. Let me clean this mess up. Okay, 10 and 7. So here's 7. I'm going to go like this all the way down. And here's 10. Highlight it all the way down. What I'm looking for is what's the first number in those two rows? Or, guys, if you prefer, you can even do it this way. You can go down if you decide if you like going down better. It doesn't really matter, okay? Okay. What we're trying to do is we're trying to find what's the first number that they both have in common. And you can see by doing it like this, the first number they both have in common is 70, right? So 70 is going to be our common denominator. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back to our problem that we had right here. Okay. And we're going to say the common denominator was 70. So we're going to put 70s on the bottom. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, look at the number that I used to have before. I used to have a 10. What did I multiply 10 by so that we came up with 70? And we said, oh, we had to multiply that number by 7. So we do it to the bottom number. we got to do it to the top number as well. So 7 times one, uh, 10 is 70. 7 times 1 is 7. Okay. We're going to do the same thing over here. We're going to say, what did we multiply 7 by? So that we got 70, we say, oh, we multiply that one by 10. Excuse me. So we're going to multiply the top one by 10 also. So 7 times 10 is 70, and 2 times 10 is 20. Okay, now that we got to this spot right here, we can go ahead and add our fractions. The number on the bottom, y'all, always stays the same. And then all we got to do is combine these numbers at the top. So 7 plus uh, 20 is a 27 over 70. If I could reduce it, then I would, but I can't break those, down those numbers any further. Okay? 27 and 70 don't have any numbers in common. And so we're just going to stop right there. But very good question. And, um, and guys, before I go on, um, let me see. It was right here. Did it make sense on how we were able to find our common denominator using the table? Because we said, let's look at the 7, let's look at the 70. What's the first number they both have in common? And then we could find it like that. And so I think it's, it's always a good idea um, in doing these problems. If you can use your table, then, hey, let's use it because it's going to make the problem that much easier, right? So I hope that helped in terms of how we're able to find that common denominator, right? And then, like I said, uh, for the test, the one that I put there was a 20 by 20. But by all means, guys, if you want to download one that's 30 by 30, you can do that. Just go into Google, type in 30 by 30 multiplication table, and you'll have it right there, okay? So you can definitely do that if you want to. Excellent question. Any other problems anyone wants me to do? We're good. Samantha, you're good. Okay. Uh, guys, you don't have to be shy. Remember, I'm here for you guys. So if you feel like, oh, I don't know if I want to ask him again, ask me again, okay? If you don't have any questions, 
you know, you're you're good, right? But if you do, don't don't be shy, okay? There's no this is a judgment free zone, and uh, and I want to make sure you guys feel really comfortable, all right? Um, I did have one that was relatively the same as 55, but like specifically on mine, uh, the uh -huh. wording confuses me. It says four less four times a number is the same as six times the number. Okay, so let me write that down. I'm going to write it over here. I can okay. copy and paste it in chat if you want me to. Yes, that would be perfect if you could. Okay. Definitely. That'd, that'd be great. Okay, sorry, it's not a, it's not a copy and paste. You can do 37 first, and then I'll figure this one out. Okay, 37. Let me do 37, and then we'll we'll take a look at the other problem that you're talking about. So let's take a look here, at number 37. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Here we go. Definitely. So number 37, y'all. It says solve for x and check our answer. Okay, so we have uh, 17 minus 5 plus x equals 5 plus 8 minus 1. Okay, so guys, remember, anytime I'm solving an equation, especially if it has a lot of pieces on, on each side, then I'm going to kind of draw my line like this so that I know I have two sides of this equation, my left side and my right side, right? So here's my left side, and, and here's my right side. So let's take a look. On the left side, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to worry about combining these numbers right here. So 17 minus 5, I know is 12, so that's 12 plus x equals, over here, I'm just going to go left to right, 5 plus 8 is 13 minus 1, and 13 minus 1 is 12, and here I have 12 plus x. So remember, I'm trying to get the x by itself. So if I'm trying to get the x by itself, and this is a plus 12, then right underneath it, I'm going to put... I'm going to put a minus, minus 12, right? So minus 12. So those are going to cancel. And 12 minus 12 is 0. So right here for 37, oops, come on, 10. I'm going to put, I'm going to put a 0 right there. So let's take a look. Let's see. Okay. So I see your, I see your question. Four less than four times a number is the same as six times the number. Find the number. Okay. So let's, so I don't know if you guys can see it here, guys, but it's in the chat. And so I'm going to do it over here on the side. And let me take a look one more time. Four less than four times a number is the same as six times the number. Find the number. Okay. So guys, when I'm reading that problem, you can decide where you wanted to start working, okay? So when it says is the same as, I know that means equals, right? So that's kind of in the middle of the problem. And it says is the same as 6 times the number. Okay, so that means is equal to 6x. Now on the other side, it says 4 less than 4 times the number. So if it's 4 less than 4 times the number, I actually have to write the part where it says 4 times the number first because it's 4 less than that. Okay. So now that I have this piece here, this is this is the hardest part is going from the words to the equation. So again, let me just read this part to you. Four less than four times a number. That means I got to do four times my number and then I'm going to subtract four. From that. Okay, so now that we got that piece, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and oops, sorry. I want to get my x's on the same side, so I'm going to go ahead and go minus 4x here and minus 4x here. Those are going to cancel. I'm going to drop down my negative 4. Uh, 6x minus 4x is going to leave me with a 2x. And because I'm trying to get the x by itself, the last step we're going to do here, y'all, is divide by 2. Okay. And so negative 4 divided by 2 is a negative two. So excellent question. Very good. 
You're welcome, definitely welcome. So guys, I'm just gonna grab some more water and uh, my kitchen. So if you think of another problem that you want me to do, you can put it in the chat or when I come right back, you can let me know. I'm just gonna grab some water, I'll be right back. So any other questions? Do you guys feel better? Do you feel like you're ready? On a level of 1 to 10, 10 being like I'm ready for this, 1 being like I wish tomorrow would not come. Anybody, anybody feel in a certain way? I'm feeling more confident. Excellent. Perfect. Very good. Very good. Like I said, it's uh, excellent. Good. Very good. I'm so glad. Like I said, guys, it's 27 questions directly from the review. You know, I know this is definitely a challenging time with, with the pandemic and um, everybody has a certain level of comfort. Some people are more comfortable doing more things. Some people are less comfortable. Um, some people are more comfortable getting the vaccine. Some people are less. Um, I'm gonna advocate if you have not yet gotten your vaccine, I would highly encourage that you do. I've gotten my, my second dose about a month or so ago, and I'm feeling fine, guys. And I, I didn't have any, personally, I didn't have any side effects with it other than I cannot even emphasize the word slight headache. Uh, and it was so slight that I didn't take any Tylenol. I mean, I've had worse headaches where I'm like, I need some Tylenol right now or Advil or something. I didn't feel like that at all. Um, but I know this is definitely a challenging time, and, and especially with our classes being online and the fact that we don't meet at a regular time twice a week or whatever, right? It makes it difficult, and everybody has different schedules. That's why I'm doing our sessions on Mondays. I was trying to do it in the afternoon when, when I felt like people might be more available. Um, but I do know that it's, it's challenging. So I'm trying to make this as direct as I can. You know, they come, the questions come directly out of the review. There shouldn't be any surprises, right? Like I said, you're not going to see a question on your test like, oh, my God, I never saw this question before. It was there out of the review, okay? So, um, you know, in the meantime, if you guys have questions about anything, you know, don't hesitate to ask me. Message me on Remind. Message me on Fonto. Uh, I have that Google phone number that I created just for our classes, so if you call me, I think the only thing it asks you to do, you probably get like a little bit of a recording and it says, just state your name. And then when it rings on my end, it says, you know, you're getting a call from Serena or you're getting a call from Samantha or you're getting a call from Mariela. And, I'm, you know, I answer it and, and we're connected. You know, it's not no big deal. Um, so anyway, you know, if you guys got questions about anything, guys, please, please, please let me know. I'm, I'm trying to help. I'm going to be as available to you guys as I can, all right? Um, guys, if you all have another question in the review, ask me. If you don't, you're free to go. Uh, I'm not kicking you out, by the way. I'm just saying if you all don't have any questions, you know, we can end it here. If you do have a question, you know, I'm more than happy to go over it. I have a question on tomorrow's test. Yes, ma'am, ask me. Um, the calculator that we can use, it's going to be the one. You can like, use actually any calculator you want, right? So like, uh, like let me see. I'm going to stop sharing this here, and let me see. Oops. My hair a little bit. Okay. So I think you guys can see me. Yes. So guys. Um, I'm just pulling up my phone, right? This is what I have on my iPhone. I'm using this right here. Sorry. You can use that. Um, 
one of the things that I did, and I'm going to pull this up here so you guys can see this, and I'll even send it to you all right now. Um, you know what? Let me see. Go. Here we go. Okay. So on my, you can download, download this app, guys. You can download this on your iPhone or your Android phone. It's called Graph and Calc. Sorry, I'm trying to, there we go. Called Graph and Calc 83. And it's just a, it's a calculator app that you can use. And, uh, and so one thing I'm going to do, I'm going to pull it up here and I have it on both my phone and on my, and on my, uh, on my iPad. And here we go. It's just a really, really big calculator. This is a little more fancy. Like I use this for my statistics course that I use a little bit in my college algebra class. You know, but you can definitely use it on this class too, okay? Uh, so whatever your level of comfort is, you know? So if you like using something like that, use something like that. If you want to just get the calculator that's on your on your phone, do that. If you have, let me see, I got, as I teach math, so I got, Calculators all over the place. Uh, let me see. If you have a calculator like from high school or something like that, I don't know what I did with my calculators. But if you have a calculator from your high school, that's definitely fine. Uh, there's no there's no rule on which calculator you can use or which one you can't. Okay. So, uh, excellent question. I'm glad you guys asked me that one. Can we print out the the chart? Um, yeah, definitely. You can print it out if you want to, or since I did uh, put it as a PDF, you can always just have it like on your laptop or on your computer if you want to. But if it if it's more, if it's better for you to print it out, definitely you can print it out. Yes, you don't have to, but if it's easier for you to have it, I encourage you to do so. Okay, and the test starts exactly at 6.30. Did you want us to log in like 15 minutes before? You can, so the way I set it up, you can log in uh, about 30 minutes. You don't have to log in 30 minutes before, right? But I set it up to where you can, you can log in as early as, as 30 minutes before. I'll start it pretty much at 6.30, but like, um, for instance, if you're at work and you get stuck at work a little bit later, that's no big deal. Just send me a message either on Reminder Pronto or call me on my Google phone and say, Sir, I'm going to take the test, but I'm, I'm still here at work. I'm going to be running a little bit late. That's no big deal at all. That's fine. And then once everybody signs in tomorrow, I'm going to give you guys some more instructions on how we're going to how we're going to do the test. And uh, and really, all it is is we're going to be on that on that Microsoft Teams, and it's very similar to Zoom. So I'm guessing, especially with the situation we've all been in in the last year, we're probably we probably I'm guessing some of us may have already used Zoom. All it is, guys, is just a way for us to monitor you guys as you take your test. Okay, so all you really need to do is just have your cameras on while you're taking the test. But, you know, it's not a big deal. Um, and then whenever you're done with your test, you just say, like, sir, I'm done, and you're free to log off. Or you can just even put a message in the chat feature, I'm already done with the test, and, and you're free to log off. Okay, is it a time test? Um, yeah, so it is and it isn't. It's it's timed in the sense that you have a certain amount of time, but I'm setting it up, Samantha, to where you guys have like four hours to do it. Not that it's going to take you four hours. Okay. So that you don't have to worry about time, right? Like it's like, oh my God, four hours, right? It's 27 questions. Um, you know, last semester when I taught the class, I think most people did it in about an hour, maybe an hour and 20 minutes. I mean, I had some students who took two hours or two and a half, but the idea is I put that really big window of four hours for you guys just so that you don't worry about time. You know what I mean? Yes, it's because I, the reason I asked is because I just got vaccinated and I okay. noticed myself like um, zoning out. Okay. So I just want to make sure like I have enough time to get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, definitely. Any uh, any other questions about it? I don't have any more questions. Thank you so much. Okay, you're welcome so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye. Bye bye. I'm good as well. Thank you so much. I will see you tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Take care, Serena. You too. Have a good night.
Right, you do the same. I'm also good. Thank you. Okay, excellent. All right. Okay, Mariela, well, then I'll see you tomorrow too. Just make sure you do sign up for the test. Um, yeah, I think I already did. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Perfect. Thank you so okay. much. I appreciate it. Yep, Thank I see you. your name right there. All right, we'll see you all tomorrow. Okay, bye.